Today, I'm finally teaching you how to twist your hair. Don't ask for this. So as you can tell, fresh out the shower. Um, you probably don't recognize the background because I am in Houston, Texas. And um, I'm actually heading to Jamaica tomorrow. So I'm trying to get my hair together in the meantime. So it's a little bit more manageable while I'm traveling. You know the deal. I feel like a lot of people get braids in their hair before they travel, which is totally laudable. Braids are expensive, okay? Braids cost a pretty penny. And um, me twisting my hair at home is virtually free, minus a little bit of hair products. So y'all have been asking me for this twist out tutorial for a long time. And honestly, I was kind of reticent to make it because I'm not a hair channel. You know, this is not what I do. Um, I mean, I, I love my hair. I've been a curly hair person my whole life, but I'm, I'm not a hair YouTube channel. So I was like, this is weird for me to post, but y'all have been asking for it for a year. And in honor of a year of y'all asking for it, I guess, <laughs> I am finally doing a little hair tutorial. So some shower prep that I did. I went in there, shampooed my hair, deep conditioned my hair, and then under running cold water, that's very important, under running cold water, I combed my hair out, okay? After that, jumped out of the shower, put my robe on so I wouldn't be indecent on YouTube, and I just put some leave-in conditioner in, pretty decent, healthy amount, based on your hair. And now, I'm gonna put some Royal Crown in, okay? This is like old school, black hair care product. I have literally been using this in my hair since I was probably, what, like five or six years old? And I'm saying that I was using it, my hair is kind of generous, because really it was my grandma who would do my hair at night before school and she would always use Royal Crown and it just kept my hair super healthy and I stopped using it for a while during my adolescence. And then she was like, Raven, why don't you start using the Royal Crown again? Like your hair seemed to really like it. Started using it again. Lo and behold, my hair loves it. So, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, and I just dropped it in the sink, okay. <laughs> so we put on leave-in conditioner and then the Royal Crown. Hello, I just wanted to jump in and clarify what it is I was clearly trying to explain but failed to do so in some of these clips. So my shower process, here's it lined out very clearly. One, shampoo my hair with the Mixed Chicks sulfate-free shampoo. After that, I go in with a deep conditioner. Either I use this, like living proof deep conditioner, or I use the Mixed Chicks deep conditioner. It's very important to deep condition your hair after shampooing it, because that helps to kind of bring back a lot of the moisture that you lost when you shampooed it. While I have the deep conditioner in my hair, I put a little shower cap over my head and I do the rest of my shower stuff. So maybe it sits in there for 10 minutes and it does what it needs to do and it marinates for a little bit. After that, I turn the water to cold and I rinse the deep conditioner out of my hair. As I'm rinsing it out of my hair, I comb my hair with a wide tooth comb or whatever you use, but that is what works good for me. And by doing that under running cold water, my hair stays wet, so I find that less hair falls out and it just glides through a lot easier. After I rinsed out probably 90% of the deep conditioner, for the leave-in conditioner, I use the Mixed Chicks leave-in conditioner. I've been using the Mixed Chicks line since I was literally like in middle school and elementary school. So it had, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And after that, I jump out of the shower and while my hair is still damp, I take a little dollop of the Royal Crown and I squeegee a little bit of it into each side of my hair and comb through again and then it's good to go. And then I start the twisting process. So I just wanted to explain that more clearly because I'm watching the footage and I'm like, I'm not making any sense. So there you have it. That's the full process. So now that I got all this stuff in, honestly, this is probably one of the quickest hairstyles that you can do. That's part of why I love it because as much as I honor and respect how long braiding takes and how beautiful they look, I simply don't have the patience. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out what kind of part you wanna have. Right now, I already kind of naturally have a middle part. So honestly, I think I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Boom, that's done. And then I think, I don't really make it clean in the back. I guess you could make it like really intricate and you know do like the box style like over your head. I don't do that at all. I just kind of start going in and twisting. My hair's gotten a little bit dry since the shower, so I'm gonna put a little bit more water on it. One thing that's key while doing this hairstyle is keeping your hair pretty wet so it'll hold on to itself. It also kind of depends what curl pattern you have. So I don't know, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure I have like 3B, maybe 3C hair. It looks a little bit elongated right now because it's wet, but when it's dry, it looks more like this. I don't know, you tell me what that is. 
Who knows? Could be wrong. Again, not a hair channel. I'm just kind of uh, spontaneously deciding to use this because I brought some travel size stuff. This is a curl sculptor. I'm gonna add a little bit of it onto my hair. This is not necessary. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> This is not off to a good start. Anyways, uh, normally I don't use this. Normally it's just the leave-in conditioner and the Royal Crown, but I'm, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of funky fresh today. So once all that's done, you figured out your part, it is literally as easy as take two strands of hair and twist them. That's literally it. Twist it all the way to the bottom. And then once you get to the bottom, now oh, this is very important, and this will depend on your hair texture. So if you have like a 3A and above hair texture, probably won't need a little band at the bottom of your hair. You can just kind of twist it with your finger and it'll hold on to itself. If you know, you know. If your curls are a little bit looser, um, you might need to put a little band at the end of your hair. But I just kind of, see what I'm doing? Just twist it at the end. Twist it, twist it, twist it. And then it just forms a little curl and it holds on to itself. So I don't have to put anything in my hair, any extra thing other than the products for it to hold, which is honestly really nice. Let's catch up a little bit about how my Thanksgiving holiday has been going because it has been a little bit rough <laughs> and not in like the way that you might think. I've been having the most wonderful time with my family. We've been relaxing, hanging out, eating yummy food, all of that. The part that's been tough is that I got a raging ear infection the day before Thanksgiving and I had to go to urgent care yesterday. It's so wild to me because I've never, at least as an adult, I feel like as a baby, maybe I got an ear infection once, but as an adult, I have never ever got an ear infection and I was just feeling so sick like after Thanksgiving dinner I had to lay down because I was feeling very nauseated and like my stomach was hurting which I think is normal after Thanksgiving dinner but like an abnormal amount of hurting you know and I was just feeling like yeah very nauseated and very sick and my hope was if I just sleep it off I'll be fine in the morning but I was coughing all night and then I woke up in the morning and I still wasn't feeling great so after my grandma and my mom kind of encouraged me to go to the urgent care, and by encourage, I mean they told me you're going to urgent care, I went to urgent care. And literally, the nurse practitioner only had to look in my ear with that like little light thingy for five seconds. She was like, oh yeah, you have an ear infection. And I was like, what? I've never had one before. Like, how did this even happen? So basically, what we suspect happened was that on my flight, on my way to Houston, Basically when you fly and they compress the cabin, sometimes it means that like the fluid in your ears doesn't move around as much as it's supposed to. And um, she had this fun little saying, she's like, where things don't flow, bacteria grow. Something like that, okay? It's probably like something she learned in medical school, which I think is great. I'm all for little sayings and gimmicks and stuff that help you to remember really key like facts. I use that all the time in my studies. Long and the short of it is, she prescribed me antibiotics and it was a good thing that I went to urgent care because if I ended up going to Jamaica without having gone to urgent care, then it only would have gotten worse because like a bacterial infection in my ears isn't just gonna go away. It just is gonna keep spreading. <laughs> Why do I keep getting hair products and hair in my mouth? So that's how my Thanksgiving went. So she has me taking penicillin, which is a pretty intense antibiotic actually. So it must've been pretty bad. I'm curious what she saw when she looked in there, but honestly, part of me doesn't wanna know. Probably gross and I, I just don't wanna know. All I know is that I'm feeling better. I took my first two yesterday. Took one this morning after breakfast, and we are on the road to recovery. So hopefully once I have two days of this under my belt, I'll be feeling really quite well to travel tomorrow because my flight is tomorrow at 6.50 a.m. So I'm gonna be up very early for that. And um, yeah, I'm excited to fly to Jamaica for my aunt's wedding. It's really exciting. This is like a big family event. Everyone is flying out, obviously, for, for my aunt's wedding. This is also, on a personal level, my first time going to Jamaica, so I'm really excited for that. And uh, to knock off some of this winter pale because Chicago, look, I love her, but she has done me dirty in the melanin department. All those winter months without any sun, are, it's just not serving me. <laughs> it's not serving me at all. I'm melanin deficient. People probably think I'm appropriating black culture when I have this hairstyle because they're like, what's that white girl doing? Like twisting her hair. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm one of you, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's okay. Today, I am hanging out with some of my close friends here in Houston, which I'm super, super pumped for. Um, it's funny because when people ask me like, oh, what's your, you know, like who are your best friends? I always say like my friends here in Houston because I have a whole little posse here in Houston and I consider them all to be my best friends. I did a whole podcast episode talking about friendship in your 20s and how my conception of friendship when I was 
you know, in high school and even like college was very one and done. Like you have your one person, that person is your best friend. You only call each other your best friend. If someone else calls them your best friend, you give them a death stare and, and that's it. And that's your person forever. And y'all tell each other everything and you do everything together and blah, blah, blah. Like it's very intense, very singular, almost like a monogamous relationship, but platonic and friendship. And I think as I've gotten older, the way that I think about friendship has changed a lot because I don't know that adults, it's not that like adults can't have a best friend. Of course, that's still a thing, but I don't know that it's that like, this is my friend and nobody else could have them. You know, like at least in my experience, I think um, multiple people can be your best friends because different people add different kind of value to your life and you add different kind of value to other people's lives. And that's kind of the beauty of being able to have many friends because you get to learn so much from different people. And that's not to say I have like a hundred friends and I'm calling them all my best friend, but I think it's okay to have like a group of people or a couple people that are your folks without necessarily having to hierarchize your relationship to one another. If you naturally relate to some people more than others, nothing wrong with that. But if you don't, I don't think you have to like force a singular best friendship, you know? And I think some people like internalize that message of, oh, you're supposed to have one best friend and then they feel like something's wrong with them when they don't have that one best friend. When in fact, especially in your 20s, it's incredibly normal to not have one best friend or even like a friend group, you know? It can be tough out here to find like people to really be close with and vibe with. All right, the first half is completely done. Like I said, see, I don't like section it out. I just kind of grab little bits and then I put them all together, but you can't really tell, right? Because it's just like a dense forest of hair in here. So I think it still comes out Looking okay, pretty cute. Let's get into the other side. Also tell me why this other chunk of my hair is literally already 80% dry. <laughs> like, can we talk about how quickly curly hair dries? The fact that my hair dries so quickly used to be such a phenomenon when I was in high school because I would jump in the water, my hair would be sopping wet, right? And then five minutes later, it would be completely dry once I got out of the water. People were like, what the heck? Like, did you did you go blow dry your hair or something when I turned my back? And I was like, no, <laughs> curly hair just dries super, super fast. At least mine does. Um, I don't know if that depends on like your hair's porosity, which is like how, oh God, please don't cover me if I get this wrong. But I think hair porosity is how your hair relates to water, like how much, how porous it is, right? So like how much water it takes in or lets out. I think that's right, okay? Yeah. I don't know, don't quote me on that. No, that's one thing about curly hair that is both a blessing and a curse because it means that I can do this hairstyle and let it dry for a little bit, not that long, and then I can be out the door and maybe it's cold outside but my hair is not wet and I'm good to go versus, you know, maybe if I had a different hair texture, I'd have to blow dry or sit under a hair dryer for like a long, long, long time for it to get dry whole different little setup. It has been such a long time since I went traveling on a vacation where I need swimsuits that I had to go out and buy new swimsuits. If you watched my packing for Jamaica video, then you already know all this, but I had to go out and buy new swimsuits because all the ones that I have, I haven't bought a new swimsuit. Like all the ones that I currently had before I bought these two new ones, I had had since I was literally in high school. And I just been rewearing them and rewearing them and rewearing them. Like my mom teases me all the time because I buy stuff and then I don't replace it for a very long time. I'm definitely not someone who has like a, a clothing shopping addiction. I'm braiding up my grandma's hair today in preparation for the wedding. So I'm trying to coordinate because there are lots of moving parts. Everyone's trying to get themselves looking spiffy and fine for the travels. <laughs> It was honestly really nice being able to have like one-on-one -on -one time with my grandparents for the holidays. Normally I have to share them with a bunch of people, which I don't mind, but it was nice to be able to hang out with them because most folks, Thanksgiving is not like our family holiday, you know? I don't know if this is the same in other families, but for my family, Thanksgiving is a holiday where most people go to their spouse's families to celebrate or observe or gather. I don't know, we don't celebrate genocidal holidays in this family, but to eat good food, we'll say. Most people go to their extended families for that. And then Christmas is our holiday, which is maybe funny to some of you because I'm Jewish, but I grew up very like, not quite inner faith, but exposed to many, many different faiths. I was raised Christian for first 10 years of my life. And then when I got to middle school, I decided to explore Buddhism. So I became a Buddhist, I'm still a Buddhist, but I'm ethnically Jewish. And so in college, I started to explore my Jewish identity more. And uh, that kind of led me to Judaism as well. And so now I call myself a Jew-boo, a Jewish Buddhist. <laughs> 
However, I still grew up like celebrating Christmas my whole life. So I still feel connected to that whole process, like decorating the Christmas tree and gathering with family, making cookies and the whole thing like that feels really fun to me. So yeah, I don't know, I'm not Christian, but I still enjoy doing all that stuff. Like I just ordered a Christmas tree for my own place, which again, you're probably like, that's weird. You're like Jewish, isn't that sacrilegious? I'm like, yeah, but I mean, no, I don't think it's sacrilegious, but it's sentimental for me. It reminds me of like family time, not so much Jesus, our Lord and Savior, which if that's your thing, nothing wrong with that. Just not personally my thing. I just realized I haven't really given you like a closer look at the actual technique that I used to twist it so quickly. So you take the hair, you split it into two bits, right? After that, I take this bit and I put it under. It doesn't really matter which, if you go over or under. And these three fingers, <laughs> this is so hard. This is, can you tell this is not my thing? Um, these three fingers stay on the strand of hair and then the pointer and the thumb are kind of rotating between the strands to help facilitate the handoff in slow motion. You see? And then as I get to the bottom, you can kind of just use those two fingers because it gets a little bit thinner, right? And then once you get to that very last bit, twist it like we said, get this little baby here, and then it holds on to itself. And that's it. That's it, y'all. I've just been doing that over and over and over and over and over again. Not nearly as complicated as it, it may seem. Um, I don't maybe it doesn't seem complicated at all, but. Yep, we are on our way. And the fun part is, you know, I get to leave it in for a couple days and it's a cute hairstyle on its own. And then when I take it out, it makes my hair all fun and crinkly and curly. And then that lasts for a couple of days too. So this is really perfect for traveling because it's free 99. Well, almost, if you don't count it, maybe the products are like a dollar, right? Close to free 99 and doesn't take too much time, serves a purpose, protects your hair while you're traveling. And then when it comes out, it gives you a whole different hairstyle. It's just, it just makes sense to me, you know? And look, don't get me wrong, support black owned businesses. We need to support braiders. They work very, very hard. I think that's just personally, like not my ministry. Though I have a lot of respect for it. Don't get it twisted. I have a lot of respect for it. I think I just had a bad experience. Do we want to tell this story? I guess it's hair related. I could tell it. I had a bad experience, okay? Going to get my hair braided. Now this doesn't mean this will be my experience every time I get my hair braided. I understand that I'm not taking that and saying, well, all hair braiders must be insert the button. No, no, no. But it was extremely painful. Okay, my hat goes off to people who get their hair braided regularly because I was on the brink of tears the entire time I was getting my hair done. The hair was also very heavy and I think maybe just too much hair, like extensions, maybe too many extensions were put into my hair because my head just felt heavy. Like it almost felt like it was ripping out my hair, which very much stressed me out because the whole point in my mind of getting braids was like as a, a protective hairstyle, not to weigh down my hair so much that it was, felt like it was ripping it out, you know? <laughs> and I don't know, I think I just didn't have like the best relationship with my braider. I, I think you have to have like a soul to soul connection. Cause when someone is in your head doing your hair, that is a very, very intimate thing. At least I, I think sometimes forget how intimate that is. That's someone in your head, bro. Like if you, if you have a little, um, what's it called? Dandruff in your head, they're, they're gonna see it, okay? They might be silently judging you or they might be like, yeah, I get it girl. You know, it just depends on the kind of relationship you have. And I, I just don't think we had that relationship going into it. Also, I picked probably one of the most painful braiding hairstyles you can get as my first hairstyle was this one, which if you've gotten that before or you've seen someone get it before, you know it's no joke. So that was my bad, honestly, that was, that was my bad. Anyways, bad braiding experience. I cried, I did, I did cry when I got home, but um, maybe one day I'll try them again. But honestly, I feel like this gives me the effect that I want. I could just throw a little extra hair in here on my own sometimes. I don't know, maybe, we'll see, we'll see. All right, I finished the rest of my routine, put my sunscreen on, put a little bit of mascara on, okay? That's really all I've been doing kind of lately for makeup, just like a little bit of mascara. Sometimes I'll do the whole thing, but I feel like my skin is now clear enough that I feel comfortable just wearing mascara, which was the whole point of going on Accutane and like taking care of the whole acne situation. So these are the twists. This is the final product. Ooh. We need 360. Uh, okay. <laughs> These are the final whatevers. Now I'm gonna get dressed in three, two. Here's my outfit. Can you see? It's not that impressive. It's just a white turtleneck, a navy zip up, and the same pants that I wear 
all the time. I'm having a lot of technical issues today. First, my camera keeps shutting off because it's overheating. Then my tripod broke between those two frames. That's why the frame shift shifted when I said, changing my clothes, blah, 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 and then it broke and it fell on the Usa. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> and I finally satiated your curiosity for learning how to twist your hair. As you saw, it's pretty much one of the easiest things you'll ever do. I've been doing it for probably two years now. It has helped the health of my hair a lot. It's a great protective style and doesn't take that much time, you know? Maybe 30 minutes and get in there, do your thing, twist it up, good to go. If y'all wanna see more stuff like this from me, let me know, but I'm not a hair channel. I'm not going to become a hair channel. And uh, yeah, that's kind of just that on that. So have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.